Boy, if Twitter would have existed back in the 1980s, I can only imagine the hot takes people would have been dropping about representation when Robert Charette came on the scene. Hello, everybody. My name is Preston Poulter. Welcome to my channel, Lords of Iron. I've been fulfilling my comic book Kickstarter. And while I was taping up all the boxes, I was listening to stuff. So I listened to this interview with Robert Charette over on Renegade HPG, I believe the YouTube channel is. And it's a fairly recent interview within the last couple of years. Uh, info card, just click on the little I in the top right corner of your screen and give it a listen. Uh, I thought it was really good. But one of the things that really struck me was how he talked about how the Japanese and Russian culture, because as he talks about, the houses are two nationalities smooshed together, and House Kurita is Russian and Japanese. Particularly when you look at the novels and in Mercenary Star, they are predominantly kind of this, this Japanese portrayal, and it's not at all favorable. There's another info card if you want to go listen to Mercenary Star, which, you know, again, I've been playing a lot of Battletech and shipping a lot of boxes. What can I say? I had a lot of free time, so I listened to the whole thing. And yes, the portrayal of the Kuritans, they're just evil mustache twirlers. And I kind of applaud Mr. Shred for wanting to maybe steer this in a different direction. So I took this clip out of the larger interview. Let's give it a listen. He's going to be referring to Michael. I believe that's Michael Stackpole. So we're picking it up here where he's talking about being in his first meeting with the then fastest staff and getting his first assignment of having to write about Theodore Carita. And they wanted me to do the, the Ted Carita story. You know, has anybody used Theodore? And Mike put his hand up. Oh, he's, he's in this uh, staff meeting. He pulls out a gun and shoots a general. Yeah, I have to write about a homicidal maniac. That, that was not in my mind. And in the course of the weekend, Mike also later remembered he used him in another scene. Theodore pulled out a gun and shot somebody. <laughs> Definitely a homicidal maniac. And I actually rewrote both of those scenes from Theodore's point of view. Mm -hmm. All the dialogue is identical, but it's a very different spin. Part of it was my desire to have a more likable central mm -hmm. character for the story. Uh, someone who wasn't a homicidal maniac. I was watching what was happening in some of the other books and they were more and more portrayed as basically a yellow peril menace. As someone who listened to Mercenary Star, yeah, look, look, go listen to that book. That, that is absolutely how they're being portrayed. No redeeming qualities. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and that is a terrible representation of the Japanese character. Terrible representation to put in a, a game. I can't recall any any hints of, of racism in Battletech. It is all about house and loyalty. The Capella Confederation. Okay. They were they were they were even worse yellow peril than the Caritans. As he pointed out, I wasn't able to work everything from the interview in. But one of the things that he mentions was that both Carita and the Capellan Confederation were the only two houses that had assassins listed in the early source books. One of the things that happens in in franchises, particularly gaming franchises, the material that comes out first sets expectations, mm -hmm. right? People didn't understand it back then, but I've watched it develop in Battletech. I mean, Davion became the heroes, mm -hmm. right? They had one of the first source books and they were against Karita in the first, in one of the first source books. And then they cooked up the, well, we're gonna have Steiner aligned with Davion. So that became the good guy axis, right? the evil, axis of nastiness, you know, who are the bad guys and do terrible things all the time, mm -hmm. as opposed to our, our good upstanding heroes, who also all happen to be white. Yeah, well, well, certainly as the universe evolved, you know, they weren't all, <laughs> they weren't all good doing good things all the time. No, so. but, but yeah, see, that was a pullback from mm -hmm. that. Yeah. They began to recognize it was going that way. Now, coming out of the comic book community where discussions of representation have been very hotly contested, I can only imagine, like I said, if Twitter were around back in the 1980s, all the hot takes of people going, not my battle deck, they're ruining my hobby. But I got to say that the pivot that Ms. Shred is describing of where, oh, we don't want to go that way. Let's go this way and kind of be more respectful of the Japanese culture was a good move, and it made for a better battle tech universe. So... Representation? Look, sometimes they got a point. What can I say? This has been Preston Poulter with Lords of Iron. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Take care.